name again, please? My name is Philip, Philip Shepard. Philip Shepard? Mm -hmm. And we also, it's Michael. It is Michael. <laughs> is it Michael? It is. Elite Mobile Cigars. Elite Mobile Cigars. So what do you, is that an Elite Mobile Cigar you have in your hand? It is. Oh, have you tried it? I haven't. I don't smoke, but if I did, I'd smoke this cigar. Why would you smoke that one? Because I've learned in life that the responses of human beings vary greatly under dangerous circumstances. Strong men mm -hmm. advance boldly. Weak men grow agitated. <laughs> but superior men, they stand up to fate and they endure resolutely in their inner certainty and bide their time to more favorable odds for a oh day like gosh. this when they could smoke a fine Cuban cigar. Oh, you are deep. Yeah, that sounds really serious. That actually is really good. Oh, look, you are doing very good by that. He's a natural. You are I've never natural. smoked, but I would. But you look, there's something I mean, about I'm a, sitting there listening to you and talking about the cigars and just the whole presence. It's, it's you. It is. I mean, there's something refined about this, and I'm not saying I'm that refined. I don't want to be arrogant or anything like that, but it's just, there's something about having this in my hand and the smell and the aroma. It's something powerful and seductive, but I don't mm -hmm. smoke. But if I did, that, I'd want to smoke, smoke this cigar. What did you think of all those boxes they have over there? I think the boxes are phenomenal. You okay. know, um, I have to say, I, I have a collection of pipes dating over 120 years. You do? I don't smoke a pipe, but I love the whole thing with like Sherlock Holmes. The I say there, <laughs> Holmes, I've got a couple of questions for you, Watson. You oh. failed to observe something like that. You know, there's something, <laughs> there's something refined and distinguished about having a pipe. It makes me think of Shakespeare. You know what it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The whole the whole image and persona. Now I'm even looking at what you're wearing. Now the shirt that you have on, it looks like it's got a leather tip. A little on it? patch, a little leather, leather patch. Patches? Yes, you see that? Oh. It's a little different. I can't remember the designer, but I just fell in love with the shirt. Right. And uh, and I like leather, and you know that's I have this interesting, yeah. little that's, feather. That's pretty cool. Because Indians wore a feather to give them strength and courage during a time of need. Right. And as you can tell, I have high cheekbones, and I'm part Cherokee. I was going to ask you that. You yeah. are part Cherokee. Yes. Ah, is that where the wisdom comes from? I don't know about where the wisdom in terms of it coming from, you know, just me being a Cherokee, but I'm right. also, you know, have a number of different races in my background from white to African-American to Seminole is Indians. Because you, your eyes are, they're, they're like, beautiful. Great. They're, they're, they're gorgeous. I mean, they I'm are. sitting there staring <laughs> at it. And eyes. I said beautiful again, because I have uh, gray contacts in. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but part of it is, is even if you have like br brown eyes, if you put gray contacts in, they still don't look that gray. So well, your yeah. eyes are lighter. Yeah, my eye, you're absolutely right. My eyes are a lighter shade, and just putting this on is a nice, softer yeah. look, I'm told. And, uh, you know, so that's why I originally got the contacts and stuff. And, and uh, I love, again, I want to say again, I, I would love if I could smoke. I think of Marlon Brando. It's all. <laughs> Don't make me go there. <laughs> so, you know, part of it is I can tell you this case because you're pretty tall. Are you a basketball player? I, mean, I do I play basketball uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And I roller skate in the afternoons. That's how I was discovered to be on Survivor, the television show. I was first runner oh, up this season on Survivor. First runner up? Yeah. Lost to you a great survived? guy named Boston Rob. Survived. Yeah. <laughs> I survived and yeah. thrived. That's really good. That's, yeah. that's quite an ordeal on that show, isn't it? It absolutely is. You have to go someplace strange uh, where you, and taken away from all your things that you're used to, including food. Okay. And you have to be able to survive and outwit, outplay, outlast some people for 39 days. we got a new season coming up right now with, uh, what is it, the South Pacific. Is it? Yeah. We're, we're, I want to say one other thing since yeah. we're, we're rolling here. Um, I, it, you know, Survivor's given me an opportunity to do some charity work, and mm -hmm. I'm doing some work with uh, the Dinah Fossey Gorilla Fund right. to help save uh, the 480 gorillas left in the Rwanda and uh, right. Uganda area. That's I'm, all that's left? Yeah, and in that oh. part of the world, 480, and she has a center that's been there for 40 years. As you know, she's passed, and Sigourney Weaver works in that effort. And, and for me, as a platform for being on Survivor, I'm able to make a contribution that way. I'm also working with um, what we call Stand Up to Cancer Reality Mud Run coming up on September 10th at 8 a.m. In Irvine, California. Love to have everybody come on out <laughs> come on and support it. such a worthy cause. And by the way, you might want to bring a fine Cuban cigar. What's the name of your That's company again? True. Elite Mobile Cigars. And that is one of the things we actually do is our business supports nonprofits. So every That's show good. that we do, every event, we donate 15, 20 percent of our proceeds to the charity of choice for that person who has hired us 
or if they don't have a, if they don't have a charity that they want to support, we support a charity called Heart to Heart. My friend Jane Stanton and Peter Stanion lost their two daughters to car accidents a year apart, and they started an organ donation nonprofit. So those are the people that we support the most, but we do offer choices, and that, that's huge for us is giving back, being able to support our community. I think that's such a worthy cause. Oh, <laughs> I think that's such a worthy cause. I think people should have the right to choose to, you know, engage in what they want to en engage right. in. And at the same time, if they want to take a few moments and reflect on the blessings that they've had over the mm -hmm. course of their life and give back mm -hmm. as she's doing and as I'm yeah. trying to do uh, by, you know, supporting these worthy causes. So, you know, thanks again for having me. Yeah. Can speak. I ask you a few more questions? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Being on a television show like The Survivor, what was one of the most psychologically challenging things that you came across well for me um, if you would have watched the season the guy that's talking to you right now is not the guy necessarily to display nationally on television because I was a guy who had to outwit outplay outlast mm -hmm. and to do that I decided to uh, be a guy that was uh, a little offbeat a little different not afraid to be a little confrontational at time when it served you know the purpose of being outwit outplay so uh, that was challenging to maintain that persona because mm -hmm. my general persona is a very lovely man, mm -hmm. um, somebody who's very, you know, caring and peaceful and, and, peaceful yeah, and thoughtful. But I, but I thought, you know, for the moment, for 39 days, and give, you know, hopefully amazing entertainment um, to the American public, it would be great to see if I could su sustain this character, which yeah. was not necessarily um, something different than myself. It was just a, mag you know, we can all get upset. Like, hey, what's going on? I right. could do that and let that be known and be okay with showing that and realizing that that wasn't going to permanently define who I am as a man or as a person. Having been a former federal agent with the United States, right. also a uh, you know U.S. Army retired right. person, um, I know who I am, so I could I could do that could and feel do comfortable that. in doing it and playing that on the show. Was it a persona you created or that they created for you? No one creates anything uh, for you out there. You have to be okay. willing to go out there and just play the game to, with your heart and figure out how you're going to outwit and outplay these people and be willing to let that come forth. Okay. Um, one of the things that being in re regular society, we have technology around us all the time. And I'm just curious, being on a show like Survivor where you're out, you know, surviving, what was the one piece of technology that you found you missed the most? Actually, in that environment, I'm such a weird kind of guy in this respect that I didn't miss any technology. I love being in the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful uh, countries, Nicaragua, with all the beautiful plants and yeah. flowers. I was always amazed by the environment, the non-polluted state of the environment. Mm -hmm. So I was meditating a lot. I'm a meditator. Yes. Um, okay. So it was it was just absolutely wonderful to be there, and I never missed any of it. Oh, that's cool. Is there anything you'd love to tell people about where to catch up with you on the Internet as to what you're working on? Sure. I'll tell, just got a little sound bite. Um, my uh, Twitter account, and I'd love to have you all follow me, is P. S H E double P A R D T V. So that's P Shepherd, first initial, last name, T V on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook at Philip William Shepherd. Um, currently, I'm, as I said, working with a lot of charities. I've got a, a, a book that I'm publishing online for people to look at. It's called The Costa Rica Job <laughs> at philipshepherd.tumblr. That's T U M B L R.com. It's got about 11 chapters out there. Hopefully, to develop that into a uh, a number of different projects from television to a cartoon to a movie. Um, I have an opportunity, I'm working with a, a development uh, partner right now, developing a, uh, a television show. Yeah. And uh, we feel really good about our chances of having that actually come forth and you know, be a, another entertaining force that I would actually be a part of. That's uh, cool. Is, is help, it help. close or can you say anything? It's extremely close and that's all I can tell you about okay. coming to fruition, but <laughs> I can't comment any further than that. Um, and it's a number of different projects that I have going, so there's nothing, you know, I want to say concretely about any one particular thing, um, but I want to say I'm, I'm so grateful to uh, having had the opportunity to participate with CBS, uh, the yeah. SEG Entertainment, who. Um, you know, uh, through Mark Burnett Productions, who developed Survivor. And as I say, we've got a current season coming out right now. It's so exciting to have an opportunity to participate in something different in life it's and really be a part cool. of all that. So I think there's a lot of, lot of things getting ready to happen for me in the future that are also positive and, and can allow me to do some of the things that are very close to my heart in terms of uh, being able to, to give back. So I'm very, very excited about that. That's really cool. Well, I will tell you, thank you so much for stopping in. Um, sure. We really appreciate it. And are you having a good time here? I'm having a great time. I'm so <laughs> glad that my publicist, uh, Ryan's uh, company, yeah. uh, Source One, yeah. uh, is able to you know make it possible for me to attend events like this. And so um, I'm so, so glad I came out today.
That's great. And we'll check out those cigars. Absolutely. Again, I don't smoke, but if I were, <laughs> I smoke a fine Cuban cigar. Ah, elite Mobile Cigars. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap, Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you.